Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, today I want to talk about the situation in one of the countries that's Russia's fiercest critics in the EU and one of the biggest supporters of sanctions and how their rejection of cheap gas has now caused them all sorts of serious problems. Now, the high cost of electricity in Poland has reached a point where it's seriously affecting the profitability of what were previously thriving businesses. The country's at serious risk of deindustrialization due to high energy prices, gas shortages, and the strict enforcement of EU environmental regulations. Plus, the Polish government's actions of slavishly following EU directives have significantly contributed to the current, current energy challenges. I mean, this government's decision to enter into a conflict with Russia over the Yamal Europe gas pipeline and then subsequently provoke an energy crisis has only exacerbated the situation. Now, I mean, the average wholesale price of electricity in the first seven months of 2024 was 90 euros per megawatt. The only countries in the EU where the, where the prices were actually higher were Ireland at 98.68 and Italy at 95 to 98 euros. At the opposite end of the spectrum, rates in Norway and Sweden were between 32 and 39 euros. Now, the Scandinavian countries do benefit from their well-developed hydroelectric power infrastructure and the presence of some nuclear power plants. I mean, additionally, in the cost of electricity in France, a country with significant nuclear energy sector, is relatively low. In July, the average price for megawatt hour there was 47 euros. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And now I'm actually thanking you just for watching the video. Now, the Polish government has expressed its interest in developing its own nuclear energy resources, but this is fanciful. It's a not a likely scenario in the near term. In fact, just as a dream, as the main supplier in Europe of the relevant nuclear technology to build is Russia's Rosatom, and Poland working with Russia like the Hungarians and the Turks are doing currently is seriously unlikely. Now, in July, the wholesale price of electricity was already 109 euros per megawatt hour. And this doesn't represent a reduction uh, in the prices from 2022, where they had to pay a bit more. But that's still twice the average cost of 2021. Now, this cost is a significant burden for Polish businesses. I mean, Poland has one of the highest wholesale electricity tariffs in the EU, which is mainly due to its dependence on coal. That's according to the state energy expert, Robert Tomaszewski. I mean, consequently, an increasing number of foreign companies are shutting down their production in Poland and relocating to countries where electricity prices make production cheaper and more profitable. I mean, since the spring of 2024, Reports have emerged of significant job losses amongst Polish workers employed by foreign companies. I mean, according to data from the Polish State Statistics Agency, over 16,000 people have been laid off by 175 companies. In early August, the European logistics giant PKP Cargo announced the forthcoming dismissal of 4,000 employees of its Polish branch. Meanwhile, the Polish branch of the company is the largest rail freight carrier in Poland and the second largest in the EU. Also, the American clothing and footwear manufacturer Levi Strauss has <coughs> announced the closure of its plant in Plock, which has operated for over 30 years and it's laying off a total of 800 workers. Now, the uh, French tyre company Michelin is ceasing production of truck tyres at its facility in Alston. The Swiss company ABB has announced the closure of its low-voltage motors plant in uh, Olotsky and the termination of 400 employees. And there's also the same concern as dismissing 600 employees at one of its other plants in Kluski. Now, the Dutch multinational car maker Stellantis is implementing a reduction in its workforce at its auto engine production plant in uh, Blesco-Bilar. 
and that's resulting in 500 jobs lost. The Swedish automotive manufacturer Volvo Buses is to cease production its facility in uh, Rocklaw, and that's losing 400 jobs. Now, Lear Corporation, an American manufacturer of car seats and electrical systems, is closing its plant in uh, Platukovo with a loss of a thousand jobs. Now, the majority of the companies in question are relocating their production to other East European countries or to North Africa and Asian countries. And these companies justify their actions by citing the predicted rise in prices for electric gas and heating as the reasons for the decision. I mean, the challenging facing Polish industry are intensifying. Polish entrepreneurs are competing with foreign companies that have access to much cheaper energy, and that's according to Agnieszka Zielinski, who's a journal at the money.pl portal. I mean, she was talking with a guy called Henrik Kalis, who's head of the Polish Chamber of Industrial Energy and Energy Consumers, who said there's a need for action to change the current situation. He said, in the Forum of Electricity and Gas Consumers, which represents the largest industrial energy uh, consumers in Poland, sent a letter to Donald uh, Tusk, that's the current Prime Minister. Yeah, that's the Donald Tusk, one of the famous EU hit squad. He was president of the EU Council and brought in many of the so-called green energy measures and has been a big fan of them. Uh, he, in the letter, they highlighted the potential risks associated with high electricity prices. He said the letter was our objective uh, expression of concern. We wanted to alert the Prime Minister to the increasing critical situation in the industry, which is having a detrimental impact on the wider economy and causing uh, a recession. Now, personally, I doubt that Tusk will take it seriously as he slavishly follows the Brussels diktats that he once designed. I mean, the situation in Poland is likely to deteriorate further. I mean, one of the challenges facing the Polish energy sector is, is not in the EU's way, policies way of being environmentally sustainable. For example, in June, the production of one megawatt of uh, <coughs> energy resulted in emission of 810 kilos of carbon dioxide. And the EU wants to phase out free CO2 emission permits between 2026 and 2024. So the refusal of free permits, so basically Polish industrialists who are burning coal have got nowhere to go and they'll have to find alternative energy sources or close. Now that's going to have a significantly negative impact on the energy sector. And it's recently come to light that the thermal power plants of the Polish energy group PGE uh, are ceased using coal by 2030. Now that was announced by Darius Marzek, who's the company's CEO. He said that heat energy for households can be produced by modern electrode boilers using energy from wind turbines and solar installations, you know, so-called green installations transition which is yet to be fully validated in any EU economy. Yeah, he really said that, but he forgot to mention that the reliance on unicorn farts is going to be necessary when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. So the wind turbines and the, <coughs> the solar panels are useless. Anyway, as of 2022, 46% of poles use coal as their primary source of home heating. And that figures just households. Industry data shows that coal generates 72% of Poland's electricity. Yes, 72% of its electricity is from coal, and they're phasing it out to replace it with wind time burns. Now, I think it's more likely that we'll not replace it with anything, as even in places like Germany, renewables make up less than 30%. So where's the rest of the electricity going to come from? Meanwhile, the extraction of raw materials is falling year on year due to a lack of investment in that industry and a lack of modernization of its enterprises. I mean, a few years ago, there were 5,000 warehouses uh, that stored a combined 1.5 million tonnes of coal during the summer months for use in the winter. That number has now decreased to under 3,000 and the coal reserves are down to around half a million tonnes. Plus, there's no viable alternatives to, for the use of coal, with the exception of so-called green energy. I mean, Henry Kalitz maintains that Poland is not yet able to abandon fossil fuels in light with the requirements set out by the European Commission, but they continue to uh, follow the procedures that they put forward. I mean, 
what they're going to do in the process is not clear. I mean, in many companies, the majority of the technological installations will have to be constructed in the future, and we have no plans for that. I mean, they're now looking at industrial companies either cease operations or implement carbon-free technologies, but how's that going to work? And I mean, the latter case is, where's the money coming from? In this context, almost all the funds from the National Reconstruction Plan directed towards low carbon transformation are not sufficient, according to Peter Soronsky, who's the chief economist of the National Chamber of Commerce. I mean, he's convinced that Polish companies are going to face significant challenges in the near future, as they're not going to be able to produce uh, electricity in the EU's environmentally friendly manner. And they're not going to be able to find cost-effective alternatives and a way of producing clean energy. So they're going to have immense problems all over, and they're still not going to be buying gas. I mean, the, nobody's actually decided in Poland uh, where in the next five years all this new clean energy is going to come from. Nobody knows, so they just keep silent. I mean, if all the industries begin to contract, there'll be no need for uh, industry and jobs. People will just be back to agricultural things. I mean, the number of Polish households with gas connections have already received ex communications expressing concern. The new gas tariffs set up by the Polish oil and gas company PGNIG to its customers is, um, is pretty shocking. I mean, it's the largest gas uh, seller and its competitors are not far behind, but it's charging uh, price increases that would make your eyes water. I mean, according to... Uh, Matusi out on the points of one net. There's been a 45% increase in gas since July the 1st. And concurrently, the fees continue to increase those associated with gas distribution, network depreciation, and other factors. So basically, the total amount available uh, at the end of July is nothing compared to what was paid by June. So Basically, what caused it? We I mean, basically what caused the price increase in gas is the, the government decided that they were going to stop paying the subsidies uh, at the end of June. These were subsidies that they were paying during the COVID time that allowed bulls to protect from the consequences of COVID pandemic when gas prices went through the roof. Right, so everybody remembers that. So the government has finally decided that they're not going to do that anymore uh, with these protective measures. So Poland's now stuck. It can't get gas uh, cheaply, it can't use coal. So the girls now just dis discussing the introduction of energy certificates that they can give uh, to people on poor and lower income families. And they basically are, are going to subsidise them while everybody else has to pay uh, the enormous burden, uh, which is unaffordable. So yet again, EU's energy policies show that they're not based on economic reality, but on politics. And they don't really care about people or the economies of the EU, the countries. They are just going blind. They'll implement policies, policies that will see the people of the EU freeze and starve in the winters. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. And don't forget the comments section. Take care.